Welcome back. We are at the very last setting of creating a new campaign before we go into setting up our ad groups. And I bet you didn't believe it would be this detailed or this lengthy. I certainly didn't think so, but this stuff is complicated and, and understanding the fundamentals is really worthwhile. It's really important. So let's open up campaign URL options. And thankfully, this is not an option that most of us will use. The overall concept here is appending information to the final URL of your ad. So you could pass tracking information and information about the click to the tracking softwares that are associated with your campaigns. And if that sounds complicated, it sort of is, and it's sort of not so important because if you're using Google Analytics, which is linked and synced up with Google Ads, you really don't have to worry about this. If you're using a separate call tracking software, let's say like Invoca, and you want to pull campaign information into Invoca, if somebody clicks an ad and you're gonna use a call tracking software to swap out a phone number on your landing page, and if somebody then dials that phone number from their landline, you want Invoca to know which keyword and ad group and campaign and match type that click came from and that phone call came from, that's when you would use a tracking template. Invoca would give you the information you need to put here in this tracking template. So anything you put in the tracking template would be produced from one of these outside softwares. It's not necessary for Google Analytics since you're gonna be tracking almost all information in Google Anal Analytics and you would paste that into here into the tracking template. For example, in Google Analytics, just to give you a sense, you'll know if clicks came from Google. You'll know if they came from a certain campaign. You'll know which ad group they came from. You'll know what keyword tr was triggered by which search term. You'll know what they did on your site. You'll know if they converted, right? You'll know all that information. It's really meant to be used, again, with outside software. If you're using call tracking systems, et cetera. Or if you're using a web analytics tool that's not Google Analytics, then you'll be able to use what Google calls value track parameters. And I'll, and I'll, create, I'll send a link in, um, to, for the Google help doc that talks about value track parameters where you could easily send in campaign ID, campaign name, um, ad group name, ad ID, creative ID, um, all these different information that is gonna be in Google Analytics anyway if you wanna send that information from an ad click into a separate tracking software. So that, again, is information called UTM parameters. They're a, appended to the end of a, of a final URL. So for example, if you have a final URL in an ad, let's say poppin.com forward slash branding and customization, and I have a tracking template set up at the campaign level, and I activate that tracking template, then every single click of an ad um, will append that information to the URL once, once I land on the page. Now, you're able, to send up, you're able to set up tracking templates at the ad level. The problem with doing it at the ad level is it's a pain in the neck to have to change every single time. Not only do you have to go into the ad level to change it or change them in bulk at the ad level, but if you change the tracking template, it puts your ad into review again. And ads, whenever you change an ad, your ads can be in review before they're approved by Google for up to a day. Um, at our agency, we usually get them approved within you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, certain accounts we could just call and get them approved. But if you're not attached to an agency, or have priority support from Google, it could take up to a day to approve your ads, which is why it's always better if you're gonna be using the tracking template to set them up at the um, campaign level. You could also add a final URL suffix, which is different than a tracking template. It's just a specific parameter that you might add. You might append something just like, you know, campaign name equals um, office chairs poppin', right? You might add just that information into the final URL suffix. Custom parameters are identifiers or dimensions that I could specify that could be used in a tracking template or a final URL suffix. And if this sounds confusing, um, it probably is a little bit, but it's also, pro again, I just wanna reassure you, it's not so relevant. It's not affecting the performance of your campaigns. But for example, let's say this was a campaign that was just for orange, um, this was just for orange chairs, orange office chairs, for example. And I want to pass to my analytics software for some reason that these are clicks coming from an orange campaign because I mean I could I could I could have my campaign name be labeled orange but let's say I want to use that as a custom parameter so I might do something like name is is going to be color and value will be orange which means that the value of that parameter whenever when anybody somebody clicks the ad will be orange and my value could have exclamation points it could have um, all different sorts of symbols, it could be anything, but I'm just gonna label it orange for now. So just to show you as an example in the tracking template, it's not what a full tracking template might look like, but it might be like poppin.com forward slash 
um, a question mark for the beginning of UTM parameters, and I might have, uh, you know, color equals my custom parameter that I just created, color. That would then pass the label, the value orange for the parameter for color into whatever analytics software I was using. Um, tracking templates and all these sort of custom parameter stuff, it is complicated. I don't profess to understand the technology behind it all. I don't always understand how these systems exactly work or play along with each other. I know enough how to set up uh, tracking when we need to set it up, of course, um, but I never really got too deep into the, into the weeds with uh, tracking templates and custom parameters because most of the time we're using Google Analytics and we have to set up call tracking, then we're, we're given the proper values to enter for the tracking template and then whatever third party softwares we're using will get the information that they need. So that's pretty cool. Well, that's that. We've now created our very first campaign shell. We've, we've understood the settings, we've analyzed the settings, um, we've learned about navigational structure from websites and forming our campaign, building um, decisions and how we're gonna lay out an account. We understand hierarchy. Now we're gonna go ahead and click save and continue. And we're going to be up to setting up our ad groups. And there's a lot to talk about here. There's Google suggestions, there's um, default bids, naming our ad groups, structuring our ad groups, choosing keywords. Um, and the next section of this course will be talking about setting up ad groups. Then we're gonna talk about creating our ads, going into billing, and then we're gonna get deep into keywords. We'll have a whole section dedicated to all different types of keyword strategies, keyword research, um, keyword observation, keyword testing, uh, and it's gonna be really, really exciting stuff. So this is a successful conclusion to this second section of this course. I hope you've been uh, seriously enjoying it, and I look forward to seeing you very soon in the very beginning of the next section when we talk about ad groups. Thank you very much, uh, so much for being with me up until now, and um, I'm having a great time. I hope you are too. Cheers for now.